I'm Melissa Idris and you're watching For The Win. Now today on the show, we're going to be looking at the changing role of managers and what can be done to keep up with the pace of change. Uh, I have joining me on the show, David Jones, the Managing Director for Asia Pacific for the Chartered Management Institute and also Datuk Sri Zabid Rashid, who is the Chairman of CMI Malaysia Regional Board. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me on the show. Yeah, good morning. Thank you. All right, so let's, uh, before we, we kind of delve into the changing role of of managers, I'd really like to understand a bit more about the Chartered Management Institute, CMI. Uh, talk to me a little bit about what it does. Right, so the Chartered Management Institute basically is all about actually trying to create better leaders, better managers, and right from the start, better supervisors and, uh, and so on. So that's really our sort of mission. We're actually a not-for-profit making body. Mm -hmm. So actually in the UK, we're a registered uh, charity. And what we've actually done is to set up, if you like, in Asia to make sure we can actually, if you like, impart some of the frameworks we've actually developed into the Asian uh, context and, uh, and so on. Okay. And through that, we've actually have the uh, regional board as well, which uh, that is three. So, so the organization um, awards kind of management, um, train, tr it provides training and all that management uh, accolades, so to speak, right? So uh, it's the chartered manager status. That's is that correct. right? Okay. That's correct. So under the uh, Privy Council, if you like, under the Royal Charter, we're actually a chartered management institute and we're the only ones that can actually award, if you like, the title or the prestigious title chartered manager. Oh. And what the chartered manager actually means is that actually it's a recognition of the level of proficiency you actually have as a manager. Mm -hmm. In the same way as you would do an engineer, the same way you would have a, a, an, an architect. An, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So in this particular regard, you know, we're, we're recognizing, if you like, the proficiency of the manager through becoming, if you like, through creating a pathway through frameworks of um, uh, training and, and learning and development, if you like, um, and then actually uh, uh, finally becoming then a chartered manager. I, I actually think, I really appreciate that because I think that management, people management especially, is an acquired skill, is almost a technical skill that you have to learn and hone over your professional career. Now, uh, can you tell me a little bit, um, Zavid, about your role? So the regional board uh, for CMI Malaysia um, kind of works together with the kind of UK body as well, right? Right, yes. Uh, in Malaysia, we, we have more, uh, more than 500 uh, members of CMI UK. And uh, our, our role is basically to get all the members together so that they will be able to uh, participate in activities relating to seminar, talks or even issues on management mm -hmm. so that the members will be able to enhance their competency as well as their knowledge about what's going on in this world, uh, both uh, in Europe or even in Malaysia. And that is so important because, you know, the landscape at the workplace is changing so rapidly. Um, and it's really important that as managers kind of, um, you know, they, they get promoted, they uh, pr move on uh, professionally. It's important that they acquire all these skills. So let's talk a little bit about the changing role of a manager. Not too long ago, the, the role and purpose of a manager was essentially to supervise somebody else's work, right? But that's completely changing now. Um, let's look at how some of the ex expectations for managers, especially coming from subordinates and employees, are changing. David, do you have thoughts about that? Yes, indeed. I mean, you're absolutely right with that, Melissa, to be honest with you, because actually what's happening now is, and particularly as Asia is continuing to grow and continuing to actually you know, have, a, have a place on the world stage, it's very, very important that managers actually have an international context. Mm. And so what we're bringing to the party, if you like, is that international context. I think the second thing is, which is uh, very, very important here, is the fact that the management style has to change as well. It has to change for a number of different reasons, but just to give you a couple of them. First of all, you've got Industry 4.0, the must hyped up Industry 4.0, <laughs> but this is actually changing, if you like, the speed of information, the way in which you're ap uh, applying, if you like, um, the various services or, or, or manufacturing products that you're actually producing and mm -hmm. so on. And so therefore, the, the rapidity and the speed of that uh, um, information and, and, and progress, if you like, is also changing. Yeah. And then, of course, we then have the cultural changes as well, because basically, if you take a look at the younger people these days, their attention span is different and, uh, and so on. So right. we need to be able to actually accommodate those, uh, those people to make sure that we're actually getting the best out of them. Mm. And this is what management is fundamentally about. It's about getting the best out of your team and, uh, and, uh, and so on. 
the best out of your team. Absolutely. And all too often, what, what, what happens is, is that many managers uh, become managers, as I indeed did when I was uh, much <laughs> younger. Um, actually, by be I, I was an engineer, so I actually became, therefore, a, a leader of other engineers. But being a detailed engineer and being a, a supervisor, as I was then, is completely different. And, different. And, 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 and therefore, it would be very, very useful for me to actually have, if you like, some sort of uh, training and uh, learning at that age mm. in order to actually develop my skills as to how to lead a team, how to inspire, motivate, um, delegate, for example, deal with difficult issues sure. as, you, as you often have yeah. with uh, staff uh, and so on, and be able to manage those particular issues. What about you? I mean, uh, what, what do you s how do you see, I guess, the role of the manager changing? Yes, I think today uh, in this uh, global environment, one of the major challenges is we've heard this word called VUCA. Okay. Volatile, yeah. uncertain, mm -hmm. complex and ambiguous environment. Now, this is happening now and uh, it, it will happen also, you know, again. And one of the biggest challenges is actually is to uh, assist managers on how to cope with this VUCA environment. Mm -hmm. They have to make decisions very fast. They have to make quick decisions, they have to make correct decisions. And all these things require uh, some wisdom, require some level of competency and information. Right. For example, David mentioned about uh, the <coughs> uh, IR, Industrial Revolution 4.0. Now, I'm not sure whether managers are aware that IR 4.0 is inevitable. Now, the basic role is how can managers prepare for the IR 4.0? Right. And this is very challenging because when you talk about automation, when you talk about Internet of Things, when you talk about big data, when you talk about analytics, some people say, oh, this is not my cup of tea. <laughs> you know, it's right. everybody's cup of tea. It has to be. Yes. It, it has, has to, to be. be. You know? yes. If, yes. Yes. Uh, and this is the biggest challenge, you know. Right. So, for, for example, uh, the uh, regional board is organizing uh, next month a talk on big data and analytics for managers. Mm -hmm. And our job is actually to facilitate uh, an easy understanding on this uh, topic, which is actually uh, often misunderstood. Right. And when you talk about big data and analytics, it's always thought that it's only people in IT, people in computer science uh, should know. No, mm -hmm. it is actually for everybody to know. You know, and, and, and this is for uh, managers. For managers that, yeah. Yeah. Because obviously you're having to manage in that environment yes, and yes. so on, how you're actually going to deal with the yeah. day to day issues. Yes. You know, so well, yes. well, you know, the Industrial Revolution um, 4.0 will change the nature of work. And when, you know, um, employees feel like their work is being disrupted, yeah. there's this element of uncertainty and insecurity which they'll turn to look yes. at managers uh, yeah. for you know, guidance and support. So we're going to come back and talk more about that right here on For The Win. Stay with us. Welcome back to For The Win. I'm Melissa Idris. I have with me uh, David Jones and Datuk Sri uh, Zabid Rashid from the Ma Chartered Management Institute. Now, we're talking about the role of, um, the changing role of managers. The reason why the ma role of a manager has to change is because the nature of work is changing. Uh, what we used to know as, I guess, the tell them how to do it, tell them what to do and how to do it. That mm -hmm. kind of management mm -hmm. philosophy is, should be thrown out the window because the nature of work has changed to be more open, more collaborative, more flexible. Um, so I'd like to, to find out, I mean, you know, based on your training and your interaction with um, people, current managers, what are some of the mistakes that modern managers are making in the modern workplace? David? Yeah, I think one of the one of the uh, traits that I see over and over again, if you like, is this level of control. Most people think that management's all about control. Mm. It's not anything to do with control at all. <laughs> it's actually about leading. It's about inspiring. It's about motivating. It's about getting the best, if you like, out of your team. We all know each other have strengths and weaknesses and so on. Right. It's been able to actually reduce the level of weaknesses, been able to tr uh, make sure that those people are actually trained up in those particular areas and guided and coached and mentored appropriately and yeah. so on. And then for the for the strengths and so on, drawing on those people's strengths. And what that actually means is that the, the combined efforts, if you like, of the team can then improve and then you as a manager will improve through that uh, result. So, so where 
did this uh, idea that managers are about control come from? It's a very old-fashioned <laughs> idea, isn't it? It, it yeah. very much is. <laughs> I, I don't know where the origins come from, but I think it's, it's, it's probably the fact that people felt that when you're actually doing the, the work as an individual and so on, you are in control of that work. Mm. So now you have to be in control, if you like, of the team. But mm. actually it's far from that right. and, uh, and so on. Um, and it's much more about actually trying to make sure that the work that you're delivering is meeting your, uh, your organization requirements, but at the same time making sure that you're um, actually uh, delegating appropriately and entrusting your staff to actually make sure that they're actually delivering to the level that you're actually uh, yeah, expecting. So, so now there's a lot more, you have to learn how to empower uh, your staff and your subordinates. So what about you? I mean, do you, do you see certain um, mistakes or I think common pitfalls that managers are making in the modern workplace? Yes, I think <coughs> today one of the biggest challenges for managers is actually uh, trying to uh, make a, uh, reach an equilibrium between managing internal stakeholders, mm. external stakeholders and balancing these internal and external uh, expectations and needs. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this is actually one of the greatest difficulty. And, and, and you find that, for example, today in the workforce, almost 50% of the workforce are actually millennials. Right. And, and you know, between the, the generation of 5 series and 3 series and 2 series, <laughs> the, the biggest problem is actually communication and mm. understanding. Like yes. what you say, yes. you know, people in the 5 and 6 series will be talking about control. Yes. But people in the 2 series and 3 series will say, no, no, no. Once my job is done, I'm done with it, mm. you know, so I can go off. So basically now there is a greater need to understand each other Better. Just, just for the uh, sake of clarification, why don't you um, explain to us what the different series are? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, basically when you talk about the two series are people who just came out of work, maybe they may have three to five years experience, mm -hmm. all right? they are new in the workforce, all right? Uh, people in the three series, they are more uh, experienced about it, but they have a different mindset because they interact between the people in the 20s and in the 40s. And then you talk about the people who are in their 40s who are actually more experienced and they have uh, greater uh, knowledge about certain things. And of course, the five series, they have been there for the last two right. or three decades. <laughs> yeah. you see? So yeah. the biggest challenge is actually how can we get the people in who are the, actually the baby boomers, for example. Mm -hmm, how mm -hmm. can we get the baby boomers, the millennials and the Gen X to work together mm -hmm. and understand that actually the global landscape has changed. The way we do things have, uh, need to be changed if we want to get things done. Yes. Right. When you talk about management, it's all about getting things done through other people yes. as a team. Right. Yes. You know, it's no more as I'm a superior, you're a superior. But how, how do you balance that? Because I'm thinking about, say, the manager of 2025. So, you know, in, in five to six years, that manager will be managing a, such a diverse team, multi-generational team. Yes. Be so how do you communicate? Because each generation will communicate differently, will want different things. How, what would a manager need to do? A manager of 2025, shall we say, what would uh, he or she have to know or inherently um, exhibit at work? I think there are four basic characteristics that uh, future managers need. First, we, first we need to think, of, uh, think about, think ahead. Think ahead? Think ahead. Okay. And then once you know about the future, you must not forget about thinking across. That means the people uh, across, you know, in other areas. Okay. And then we must also think again. <laughs> think now, again. Once we have got think ahead, think across, think again, but more important is agility. Okay. <laughs> think again meaning... Uh, that means to make sure that whatever you think ahead, whatever mm. you think across, fits well. Because whatever you think ahead may not be suitable for people in other areas or disciplines. Right. Okay. I, th I think it's also about drawing out the best of yes, your team. Yes, the best, yes. Because I think one of the things that's got to be recognised that you as a manager are in that position to actually make sure that you're getting the best out of your, your team. Yeah. You don't have all of the answers. Yes. Often mm. your team have all of yes. the answers and it's been able to make sure that they, their, their contributions are being valued, that they're being suitably uh, rewarded for that in that regard, um, and to make sure that you as a team are operating as, as a team. So, mm. as Dada Sri has already mentioned, I think it's about communication, it's about team skills, and it's about being able to jointly, if you like, resolve the problems and come up with the solutions that are necessary to move the organization forward. Definitely, and you know, that 
that target is actually a moving target. Mm -hmm. So agility, I thought, was really an important, uh, you know, you as a manager, you really have to, I guess, be prepared to throw the rule book mm -hmm. out the window yeah. and then learn to think on your feet and change the way you manage at the office um, as things change. For example, uh, I was in Indonesia a few days ago and somebody was asking me, uh, these young people, you know, they want to be paid but they don't want to work at 9 to 5. So I said, why do you want to pay them at 9 to 5? Give them an assignment, pay them on a project basis. Right. Once the assignment is done, that's it. You know, Because you don't have to worry whether he is doing work or not, because what's important is the, the assignment is completed. Yes. And once the assignment is completed, you can pay him or her off, that's it. That's a classic example of the differences in mindset, right? Yes. You have a, a generation that is used to clocking in at 9 mm. and clocking out at 5, and that means you've been productive for the yes. day. Yeah. Whereas another generation means, I, I don't need to clock in. <laughs> I, I'm working yes. remotely, but I'm very still true. working. Yes, right? indeed, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. No, I think the, the other thing I think that's very, very important here is, is that when you actually are giving the person the opportunity to actually supervise or manage a team for the very first time, mm. that they're actually given, if you like, the skills and the training necessary to be able to do it. Because as you mentioned earlier, and, uh, and so on, some of it is inherent, but much of it actually requires training and practice it's right. experiential but in order to actually develop those experiences you need to actually have a foundation and I think this is where it's sadly lacking because often what happens is and no disrespect to those guys who are offering these programs but you see these two-day courses on report writing skills and negotiating skills finance right. for non-finance fund managers but it's not holistic it's not telling you how to inspire or motivate or lead a team mm. um, and these are skill sets and as Dada has already mentioned the communication side of it's so so important right. so these are the skill sets that you need to have have um, and also and this is a very uh, cultural issue is to be able to un understand that you as a boss are not always going to be right you're going to make <laughs> you're going to make mistakes that and, is and, true. And, and to be transparent and that say I am wrong and I'm sorry but I've made a mistake here and so on and own up you'll gain much more respect and command much more respect of your team and indeed your peers if that was the case it's often it's often difficult to find leaders who are able to own up to mistakes mm. right? right that accountability <laughs> is is really quite a, a yeah. difficult uh, chore I have to say we're going to come back and continue with this discussion right here on For The Win. Make sure you stay with us after these messages. Hi, I'm Melissa Idris. You're watching For The Win. Thank you for staying with us. Now, we were talking about the uh, changing role of a manager. Now, I want to kind of flip that across and look at the role of a manager in change management because often in the workplace, when we feel like our jobs are being disrupted, uh, there's an element of insecurity. We turn to our leaders and our managers to to look for support and guidance. Uh, but you know, in some cases, it turns out that the managers and leaders themselves are the most resistant to change. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about that. Um, I mean, their leaders and, man and managers are supposed to be the prime agents mm -hmm. in uh, driving change, in, I guess, providing that support for any kind of uncertainty. Um, how do you, what, what advice would you give to managers who themselves are struggling with embracing the idea of change, let alone being the ones to drive it? Yes, uh, change is always a very interesting uh, dynamic, <laughs> simply because if, if change is, if you like, imposed upon you, we as an individual tend to be very resistant mm. to that change. Especially if something's been working mm. for you for yes. so long. Yeah, Why rock the boat, yeah. right? A a absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. But if we do not do that, we're going to be left behind. And that's a fact. Not only are we going to be left behind as an organization, we're going to be left behind as a department, we're going to be left behind as a manager managing that department. Mm. So it's important that we are actually there, prepared to be very open, to embrace change, to actually look at you know, areas, for example, that could be automated. Um, maybe there's a change in, way in, 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 in which the organization changes should, should actually uh, be um, um, involved, if you like, if, uh, within the overall um, uh, uh, company and, right. uh, and so on. I think that's very important that the, that the manager themselves are prepared to be very open to ideas, very open to, to those issues. Um, and I don't think you can necessarily train people up to be uh, better, if you like, at this uh, uh, change management. But what you need to do is you need to have people who are much more open, more flexible, more adaptable, more prepared to accept new ideas. Right. Um, and I think once they've been uh, able to understand that through this, it's actually making their jobs more interesting, it's making their jobs uh, more valued, it's actually causing them to actually continue to learn, then I think it's fine. 
the second point that you make is about, you know, then, so now the manager's hopefully accepting if yes, life change yes, is good. Yes, that's right. Um, now, how do they actually make sure that the staff are prepared to accept this? Well, I think that then, it, it, I think there's a very, very simple tool and technique that can be used. And it's very simply that you need to involve your staff. You can't be expecting to direct and to actually um, uh, embark on a change unless you've actually got, got their buy-in and right. so on. And to get their buy-in, you need to involve them. You need to involve them in the decision-making process. Mm -hmm. You need to involve them in, in actually um, moving forward because they often have very, very good ideas. And if you can actually generate those ideas, often you'll bring them very, very quickly on board. I see. So getting them engaged and involved is really one way for them to kind of be part of the change. Now, you know, you brought up something that's a bit quite interesting previously, focused on communication. In Malaysia, it, we, it, our kind of culture here is really avoidance of any kind of conflict, any mm -hmm. kind of, uh, you know, we have, I guess, I would say generally speaking, an avoidance of change. Um, so that can cause quite a lot of anxiety when you want to avoid change and it's being mm -hmm. fostered upon you. How would you recommend um, or how would you look at communication, um, you know, by managers at the workplace, getting the team on board to embrace, embrace change? Okay, I think uh, one of the things that what we can do is this is where the regional board role comes in mm -hmm. because uh, we organize from time to time uh, talks, mm -hmm. uh, either a luncheon talk or tea talk. And this is a session where our objective is actually to open up the minds of these uh, C-suite managers. And with this, we'll give them some form of education or mm -hmm. executive education and outlook. And from there on, we can actually uh, get them interested into specific areas of change for example okay. you know so this is particularly very important for example you find people talk very well about harvard business school executive education mm -hmm. and why do people do go there it's all because they want to know what's going on what are the latest uh, uh, issues and challenges yeah what kind of conversations yes, are happening yes, right yes, at that yes, level yes. So you want to be part of the conversation yes. and the other uh, one is uh, to have diversity to understand mm. diversity in organizations. Now, when you talk about diversity, there are two aspects. One is a cross-cultural diversity mm -hmm. and the other is gender diversity. Mm -hmm. and, and I believe in Malaysia, we are quite lucky because we have a mix of both. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's very unfortunate that uh, there is uh, a lot of miscommunication in understanding both. Mm. <laughs> what do you mean miscommunication? For example, to what extent actually a Malay manager understands well about the non-Malay managers, the Chinese, the Indians, and vice uh, versa. So non-Malay managers. Yes, okay. uh, you know. And then, for example, to what extent do we, as a male manager, we understand better the issues of the female right. uh, peers, for example. Yes. So these are areas that we need to actually address so that both will understand better. So this is where you talk about communication. Yeah. Well, you know, I think managers have this wonderful, extraordinary power <laughs> to either <laughs> reduce or exacerbate inequality. Mm. Yes. Um, so what, what do you think managers should keep in mind when uh, reducing the, I guess, inherent uh, unconscious bias that you may have towards someone who is different? from yes, you. Yes. I, th I think the important thing is to actually be very open. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you, you've got to understand that uh, each individual person I outside the world of work and uh, so on are actually, if you like, managing a home, managing, if you like, uh, uh, um, their uh, social life, managing, if you like, even some uh, that contribute towards the community mm. and uh, so on. So if they're able to do this, why can't they put that same sort of energy and same sort of passion in there? So I think in, in, the, in the world of work, and I think here what it, what it requires is for the manager to be able to draw out mm. those, ex those experiences and to actually make sure, and you mentioned about innovation, mm. uh, draw out the ideas and, and, and uh, so on from the staff and be able to say, hey, that's something I haven't really thought about right. because I, I operate within a particular frame set. These people who are actually reporting into me and, uh, and so on, my staff, are actually operating in slightly different mind, uh, 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 frame sets and so on. And is there a way in which I can actually draw on the strengths of all of my team and uh, so on. So uh, as Dadashree said, whether, whether it's actually um, uh, no, uh, religious diversity, cultural diversity, uh, gender, gender diversity, diversity. So absolutely, you can draw on the strengths of your team and, uh, and so on to actually make sure that you know, at the end of the day you are performing. Because at the end of the day, the manager is a key uh, denominator in the efficiency and productivity of the organization. Definitely, definitely. What about you, Sabi? Do you have thoughts about how a manager can uh, reduce inequality in the workplace by increasing diversity? Yes, I think one of the things is that to recognize, to recognize the different uh, perspective 
and to incorporate those uh, perspective into uh, the workforce today mm. and realize you know for example it just takes a fire old kid to tell you something <laughs> and then you realize wow that's a great idea you, you just know? have to be open yeah, to just listening open, yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know you have to be a good listener today yeah. yes. you know it's not just telling people what to do but also to listen what's going on and also from others yeah for sure. Well, unfortunately, gentlemen, that's all the time we have on the show today. But I think my biggest, key, my key takeaway today has really been that a manager, more than anything, has to be the most open mm -hmm. person to change and yeah. listening and communication. So yeah. openness is inherent, is a, a, a really important key to being mm -hmm. a good manager. Thank you so much for no, being on the show with me. The thank, you. thank you. I'm Melissa Idris, and you've been watching For The Win. I'll be back with you same time next week. I'll see you then. Thank you guys. Thank, Thank you, you so much. So much. Well Thank done. You. Thank you. Thank you. Very well. Yeah.